Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. Let's talk about the Internet of Things, specifically how to measure current consumption of something that dynamically changes from almost zero to bunches of current. With that, let's go low power measure. This device combines multiple sensors into a feather form factor. It contains sensors for sound, humidity, temperature, and light. There is also a micro SD card for logging and an RTC for timestamping. My idea for these wings were to attach them to a battery and then throw them around my lab to collect data over time. The board I am using in this video is based around a feather with a 32-bit ARM Cortex M0 Plus microcontroller. Over in the code, the processor sleeps for five seconds then grabs the current time, checks each sensor, writes the data to the SD card, and repeats. Later, I come back to this other stuff. With that device stack up, let's look at several ways to gauge current consumption, so we can estimate how long it would last on a battery like this. When you think current measurement, your mind might immediately go to a DMM. Here, the handheld meter breaks the power connection so that it can measure the current between the bench supply and the device under test. Like most low-cost DMMs, this one only samples around 4 times per second, but we can almost see that the duct goes from 2 milliamps to 15 milliamps as the processor wakes up, does its thing, and goes back to sleep. If you have an advanced power supply, it might graph voltage and current over time. And this starts to give us a reasonable idea of what is going on, but not a whole lot of precision. Yet another option is a bench DMM which can measure faster. And some, like this one, can also record measurements or statistics over time. For example, this DMM can sample 200 times per second, which gives us a bit more information, especially when we look at it as a graph. See, there is a huge spike that is well above 15 milliamps. Yeah, the handheld DMM is good for steady state but the bench DMM clearly showed a huge spike, which we didn't see with the power supply or the handheld. So next, let's use an instrument that can sample much faster than any of those. Current probes for oscilloscopes have a Hall effect sensor. The sensor converts the magnetic field around the wire into a voltage, which is displayed on the scope. Unlike the DMM, we do not have to break the circuit for the measurement. Now we can clearly see that huge spike. Using peak detect mode, we can capture the maximum voltage at those points and then use cursors to measure it. And now we can see that those spikes are on the order of 100 milliamps. And there are a lot of those little transients, not just the one we saw in the DMM. It is important to know about those higher current transients because batteries are less efficient with higher current draws. Also, those transients are potentials for the voltage to sag briefly. Backing up, we can see the entire dynamic activity. It starts with the processor sleeping, then waking up, turning on the LED, reading the sensors, and finally writing to the SD card. However, there's just too much noise from the probe to get a really good idea of exactly how much current this IoT device is drawing. Also, we cannot expand the vertical scale very much because those SD card spikes would overdrive the scope's front end. On one hand, current probes are great because they let us see that dynamic activity. On the other hand, their limited sensitivity limits our measurement ability, at least with a few milliamps. Also, their price tags tend to have a comma in them. So for measuring small currents over time, we need another option. In a previous episode, I introduced an instrument called a Source Measurement Unit, or SMU. You can think of these as a very high performance bench DMM with an advanced power supply built in. One example I showed back then was a dynamic current measurement with an LED flashing on an Arduino Uno. Like the current probe, those boxes are great to have, but they do require budget planning. And if you only need like 100 milliamps of current, they can be a little bit of overkill, which is why I was excited to find this. It is called the Power Profiler Kit, and it is a USB-based SMU that costs just under $100. US For clarity, I bought this one myself, so this video is totally not sponsored. Well, by them. Just like the instruments, this tool provides power to the target device, but it does so over USB. And then it can measure the current consumption and graph it over time while connected to a PC. On the bottom of the screen are digital inputs which show on or off. 
This device has seven digital inputs, but I have only connected two of them to I.O. pins of this Featherwing. The Arduino code I showed earlier toggles one pin when a sensor activates and another for the SD card. For profiling purposes, I added a ridiculous 100 millisecond delay between each action. When the microcontroller is asleep, the circuit draws about 3 milliamps. Just like the oscilloscope, we can see when it wakes up and turns on the LED. By looking for the first time that digital zero goes high, we know that the M0 Plus is accessing the RTC. And here we can see that the current went down a little. Huh. So the next time that digital zero goes high, it is the temp and humidity sensor. Huh. Okay, last we checked the light sensor and, well, you know what I'm going to say. Huh. Anyway, now we get to the SD card and wow, it is just sucking up all the charge. Notice the 38 milliamp average current. We didn't really see anything like that on the DMMs. One reason I really like this tool and its software is because it is so easy to measure current draw at different times. For example, the rest of the on time averages about 15 milliamps, which is closer to what the DMM was telling us. Looking at an entire cycle, we see that the average current draw is 4 milliamps. Again, closer to what the DMM was showing, but they didn't show us any of the significant spikes or the energy cost of different code sections. With that kind of current consumption, a 2500 milliamp hour battery like this one is going to last almost a month. But let's consider a few things. First, this code isn't optimized yet. Second, there is an always on LED. And for these kinds of sensors, logging every five seconds is way too often. But by using IO pins and delays, we could easily identify chunks of code or hardware so we can profile how each piece contributes to the overall power consumption. By the way, even if this battery has a capacity of 2,500 milliamp hours, we won't get the full capacity, but that's a topic for a different video. In my case, the battery will last at least a couple of weeks. However, once you take into account your circuit with your sensors and maybe some Wi-Fi radios, or even temperatures changing in the application, that's when this kind of profiling becomes critical to maximize your battery's life. In summary, the DMMs missed the high current spikes, but gave us a good average current. The oscilloscope with a current probe gave us a good picture of the overall process, but we couldn't get detailed analysis of the current values. The USB-based SMU sat in the middle. It showed dynamic current usage, it saw the spikes, and it had some battery-specific measurements. One question I have left is why the current consumption dropped when accessing the I2C devices. I saw it on both the SMU and oscilloscope. If you have ideas about that, then let's talk about them over on the Element 14 community. Over there, you'll also find show notes with links to the tools used in this video. Remember, that really is the best place to ask me questions because I'm more likely to see and be able to answer them over there. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to counting every single electron as it goes by on my electronics workbench.